Do you like Michael Hutchins? No. Did you like Michael Hutchins? I had no real knowledge of him. I was just In obviously excess. fascinated. No, no. I was just fascinated by the whole Paul Yates. Yates. And what I was really fascinated by, and I'd love to know if it was true, mm. apparently a lot of his depression was due to the fact that he'd tripped over on a curb and bashed his head and lost his sense of smell. And one of the great... Well, he was... Obviously, he was a hedonist. Loved great food, loved great wine, but loved the smell of women. And apparently, it plunged him into a deep depression. Ah. I filmed him at his... I believe his last gig in Britain, in Manchester. And we did one of the last interviews with him where we asked him about his depression. And he was an incredibly, he was an incredibly nice man, very quiet. Was he? Incredibly reserved. And his co-band member, who I forget the name of the guy, I mean, I was never an In Excess fan. But we'd got this exclusive interview. Paul Yates was at the gig in a disheveled state, I think mm. carrying their baby around or a, a baby around. Um, but she was, in a, she, was in, she was in a terrible state, bouncing around in the mosh pit sort of area at the front of the stage. We were just on the side of the stage. We interviewed him for uh, about 30 minutes and I got, when he arrived at the Manchester Stadium, was it the O2 or whatever the, I, whatever the name of that stadium is, he got, his, his tour bus arrived and I got this shot of him just standing with his arms out and he just fell forward, <laughs> flat onto the ground. Like it didn't hurt him. And it was Aaron. a shot that went everywhere. It was, a, it was a, an individual shot that was then seconded out all over the place. I'm fascinated to know whether in this documentary they've got any of our last interview oh, with him. Because we, we did what I believe was... Because only about... He went back to Australia and I think about a month or six weeks after our interview, he killed himself or he died. Oh. So, yeah, so... I haven't um, actually said this is what we're talking about. A documentary Michael about Hutchins. Michael Hutchins. So this is a documentary about Michael Hutchins, which uh, Dogworth, which is a great documentary distributor is about to distribute. So here, here we go, let's have a look. The amount of experience that we go through in doing what we do is in many lifetimes. The problem is holding on to a fixed point for long enough to understand it. You know when there's one person in the room that has a special light, that was him. He was the complete package. And everyone wanted a piece of him. Michael always had that aura about him. If you're a sensual being, all of your senses need stimulation. And a lot of it was based around pleasure, let's face it. I don't like the idea of golf. I don't like the idea of success. He actually wanted to be an artist. I think it confused him whether he wanted to take on being Michael Hutchins. It started to take its toll on him. We were riding home on our bikes. This insane taxi driver got out of his car and punched him. And right from the get-go, Michael was kind of different. I just thought this incredible, overwhelming sense of sadness. This is not the Michael that I know. I, he was a shy kid. I was standing. He didn't want to walk into a room full of people, let alone see me. Anticipation. I remember asking Michael what his definition of rock and roll was. He said... Liberation. Sometimes your stars line up and everything in life clicks. And sometimes you're fighting against nature itself. So good. Doesn't it? It looks brilliant. What a In fascinating life. In the ilk of life. Amy. It looks great. I mean, it looks like one of the, a standard brilliant documentary. Um, Whitney. Um, I, I do think it's nice to sort of home in on these sort of characters that are slightly at the edge. He sort of he has been ignored and forgotten, really, hasn't he? Just at, at watching the them there with those massive crowds. Oh, yeah, huge crowds. They, they were massive. I mean, I was never an In Excess fan. Mm. But, uh, but, yeah. So, yeah, no, fast. I'm, I'm more interested in the Paulie Yates part of it all. That's the sort of tragedy that kind of fascinates me yeah so it'll be it'll be interesting for us because obviously we just know about the tragedy yeah but what was the man behind because we weren't fans who was the man behind the tragedy what was going on with it i, I am interested to find out but i'm fascinated him. by the bit that you knew about that i knew nothing about which was the fact that he took a knock to the head and he completely changed i mean that's the stuff of fiction 
isn't it? Not yeah, well, necessarily it was said the there, stuff. wasn't it? Because I never knew yeah. whether that was the truth. Well, yeah, but obviously he was punched. So he was punched by someone and then his life changed and then he offered, suffered from anxiety attacks. Well, I'm not surprised if a man just randomly gets out of a cab. And of course, I'd forgotten yeah. about the Kylie Minogue and the Hel- Helena Christians. Uh, was he going out with Kylie Minogue? Oh my God, he was the one that released her sexuality. Yes. He, he was the one. Her? He completely changed her from the girl next door uh, into raunchy Kylie with the shorts right. and everything. Right, and look, Nick Cave's in there as well. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it'll be fascinating. No, I'm really interested, yeah, Intrigued. to find out more.